And welcome to a Dead Lemming production. Today we're going to go over a speed sculpt I did uh, last night of a skull. I am joined by a colleague of mine named Wesley. He works at Heartsuit Labs. He is the lead technical artist and the lead VFX artist. Uh, I think he only has one title though, technically. Anyway, he's going to be kind of talking to me as I walk you through this skull. How you doing, Wes? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you holding up? I'm good. I'm in San Diego, so things are pretty chill. Yeah, being on the being on the beach is nice. I also live near the beach, but in Seattle, where it's rocky and sad. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, for anybody who doesn't know, Heartsuit Labs is uh, located in Seattle. It's a good little place. So I'm gonna get this video started, Wes. Yep. All right, here we go. And there's no audio. There's no audio at all. It's just us talking. So I start this whole thing from a sphere. And the I have some ref on off screen to my left. But I primarily use a skull that from Raphael Grizzetti and a skull from Madeline Spencer as ref within the viewport itself. I start super planar. You know, kind of the way you would start a drawing, really. I, I had my sphere, and then I cut off the sides. Starting to get my jaw in there. And really what you're going to see is a very sort of structured and planar approach to the whole thing. What's the, uh, what's sort of the goal of the sculpt? Like how, like sort of what percentage are you trying to reach of those skulls? That's a really good question. So, Really, this is a demo for our mutual colleague, Peter, to try and get him to think about the planes of the skull while he's sculpting. So this is sort of, this is sort of like a, a lecture with no words, except for our common, um, commentary now. So I'm not, I'm not gonna take the skull to a super finished and detailed state. I'd never bust out any alphas. I never, I basically never get into tertiary detail and I'm probably about, yeah, what's a good percentage? I feel like I take the skull about 75% of the way. But I feel that if you look at this video, it, it's really about the approach and seeing how I kind of planarize things. That's the other thing is I do simplify some shapes in the jaw and the muzzle area into pretty much just boxes and I, and I keep them that way the whole time. The, the muzzle's a little bit rounder and there's a bit of finesse to the plane changes of the lower jaw, but overall this is sort of, these are sort of the planes that I want everyone to sort of recognize. The other thing is the forehead is not flat all the way across. It's sort of, if it's flatted at all, it's sort of in the very center, but you sort of have these planes on the side and you have almost like this bulb of the forehead and you have the brow, which comes off. And that that's a real big takeaway. You know, I noticed that in a lot of people's skulls, they, they tend to just make that whole forehead flat and it's really only flat looking in the side view. So one of the main goals then to also call out sort of the the various landmarks. Yeah. Like planes and landmarks then. Is that kind of what the, the ultimate sort of takeaway is? Pretty much, yeah. So like we have we have cheeks, we have the brow slash you know orbital socket, we have the forehead, we have the muzzle, the mouth, we have the jaw, and we have the nose, and then we have I can't remember what the, what they're called, but you have those little nodules in the back of the skull next to the jawbone and i think that's where the sternoclinomastoid connects you have those as well and and really that's kind of it i, th I think the tricky part is sort of proportions in a lot of ways you know i, th I think most people when they see a skull it, it's fairly straightforward and in some respects right um
And then here, yeah. oh, sorry, Wes, what were you gonna say? Oh, I was just gonna ask on the, just sort of on the topic of proportions, uh, do you have any sort of tips or hints for how to sort of measure out or, or consider those proportions when you're doing a sculpt versus just like using your eye? Like, is that, do you primarily try to, try to like teach the eye or are you using other tools to sort of compare or evaluate your sculpt? That's a good question. You know, I, I'm really thinking about this from sort of a 2D construction method in a lot of ways. So, you know, the skull is the face, right? So your proportions don't really change so much that much. Um, I mean, sure, the skull is missing some muscle buildup and some other things, but um, really, you know, I'm, I'm trying to keep this idea that it's probably about five, I think it's five eyes across, right? Your cheekbones line up usually with the bottom of your nose and the bottom of your nose, uh, even on the skull, you know, where that little pointy thing is coming out there at the bottom, you know, that's pretty much the bottom of your nose for real. You know, I know it's missing the little, I don't know what you want to call it, nose cap over that, those, that yeah. hole. Um, so, so generally, I'm, I'm just trying to emulate the main proportions of the face ha as I know them when I'm drawing. Sort of dividing the face into, into thirds. And you know, and I'm thinking more about boxes. As you'll see, like I just sort of keep making this thing more and more boxy and more and more planar because I feel like the anatomy gets really, really confusing so I, I try to cancel out some of that confusion by just paying attention to the construct, constructed planes. Anytime you see it dip to black, Wes, it's probably an area where I saved. Yeah. Nine times out of ten. Just a little cut or something. To... Yeah. Yeah. Now, one, one thing I am doing is I, while I'm keeping the certain principles of drawing in mind when it comes to proportion. I am also taking cues from that ref. I'm not trying to necessarily match that ref one to one. I'm just trying to sort of sculpt a skull with most of the major planes and landmarks accounted for. You can see like the muzzle is pretty boxy. I'm, tr I'm trying to keep a hard plane on that on purpose to just sort of show what's happening there. So obviously you're still sculpting in a like a, a really low subdivision level. So yep. from like a sculpting sort of strategy standpoint, like when like when's a good time for an artist to subdivide? Like at, at what point does that make sense? And where should like they do that work? Almost never. <laughs> um, <laughs> most of my major work is done on lower subdivisions. And I think I actually cut it out at, in this video. I think maybe you see me hint at it once or twice, but once the sculpt gets to a place where the, the polys are stretching too hard, I remesh and I remesh to a low subdivision and I project up my detail from the last sub tool. So here we go. I've remeshed at this point. That was the new low poly popping in. And I continue forward. I feel that um, it's much easier to control what's going on if you have decent topology and a subdivision stack, because all your big moves are really going to be made on those lower subdivisions. I don't really make big moves on higher subdivision. I feel that makes your model really gooey and stretchy, and it can also ruin a lot of um, your like sculpture work. I'm doing a little bit here. As I say that, you see me sort of moving some stuff around. Um, but the, I don't really consider what I was doing there major moves. I'm talking about like... You're really oh, trying to preserve structure then. Correct. In here, like I kind of added a little bit of the bony structure uh, to the cheeks there, but there's still a flat plane. Like don't let... we. I don't want anybody to let those little like cavities or nodules confuse you. Like it's it's pretty flat in there. And really that's all you're going to see me do, Wes, is sort of highlight planes and then sculpt them down a little bit and see go into that lower subdivision mesh. Uh, and I don't use Dynamesh. I talk about it in other videos. I think Dynamesh is destructive. I don't 
I don't think it's good workflow. I think this is much cleaner. I don't know if you agree, Wes. I think you like Dynamash, right? Um, I do. I, I am sort of last time I was really deep into ZBrush land. Dynamesh was kind of one of the new one, one of the new toys. Yeah. So I, I, I maybe used it a little more than I normally would. Um, I did I I did see some it felt like it allowed me to work fast. Sure. Um and that was really kind of like I was like, how fast can I knock stuff out in ZBrush? Like that was like one of my main goals. Yeah. It was not necessarily like, you know, when you're looking at priorities, right? Like construction at that point was not necessarily the top priority. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. I just don't like that the, the mesh actually kind of slowly gets junkier as time goes on. And mm. I don't know. I, I could actually say negative things about it all day. Really? I think that everyone should just adopt my topology is getting out of control. How about I just Z remesh, project up the stack, move along, especially because this is way easier to UV. You're you're probably going to keep your symmetry this way. I just think it's, it's about cleanliness for me and control. I feel like I have more control this way. Um, I, I paused the video there. Yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, you can see just how boxy that muzzle is becoming and how far back in space that box goes without mm -hmm. um, without any muscle. It's kind of crazy, actually. And you can also see, I feel like it. the skull kind of fools you into thinking, thinking it's further along right now than it is. And I think that's just because, you know, I've really got a sense of planes and structure going and I'm just continuing to reinforce that. That just shows that the, the construction is, is strong, like you're getting the read. And that's what we want. We want the read. And I think that if you go for detail, you go for broke on detail too fast, you, you won't get the read. You, you skip the read by accident. There's an old uh, old expression one of my old art teachers used to talk about polishing a turd. You know, people that learn all these, all these like Photoshop, like rendering tricks, but they would never have good underlying drawings. Oh, so, so they just have all this real shiny, fancy rendered stuff. And it's just the, like the worst composition in the world. You know, it's, it's kind of stuff. Totally. Totally. Yeah. It's, you know, in these videos, I, I kind of talk about that a little bit. I call it, it's like pushing buttons, you know, at the end of the day, the real pros are just using circle brush and the most yes. basic stuff. And they're just yeah, doing the care, art. Care about your brush pack. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that shit. It's so funny. Well, cause, cause once you, once you understand all the rules, you're just like, oh, are these even really shortcuts? Cause I can just do this in a couple of strokes and it's done. And, yep. and that's, that's really when you start approaching master level, right? When you're like, no, I don't need a trick. Cause I can actually give you all the information you need in five brush strokes. And it used to take me, you know, 75 brush strokes and a box of tricks. The, the real pros, they're, they're using circle brush and like flatten brush or or any brush somebody gives them, right? They'll be, they'll paint right. with the star brush, right? They, they're like, I don't, I don't care. This will look awesome. And that's my approach is just sculpt it all, basic brushes, just hit your planes. and. You know what, to me, that's more fun because it's more hands on and I'm not spending time just, oh, where's this menu? Where's this? You know, I'm actually arting. Um, cool. I wanted to just kind of call out, I'm making this really boxy and emphasizing the corners really, really hard for this video. You can just see how boxy this is. And you can see I'm creating ledges. I know it looks like I'm, I'm making lines, but I'm about to turn them into to ledges. Boxes are your friend. I, I feel that I don't have as hard of a time with things now that I think of them as boxes. <laughs> and drawing a lot. I feel, you know, ZBrush is a, is a 2D program, really. And it has more in common with drawing as far as 
you know, arm and wrist movements it has w way more in common yeah. with drawing than it does with sculpting. And so when I'm looking at this, when I'm making those lines, I'm, I'm just imagining sort of the vanishing points in my head. Like, oh, this is where the form turns, this is where it goes back in space. Because if it makes sense on my 2D canvas, then it works in this quote 3D space that, that we're establishing. And see, the other thing is, is that when we use Z Remesher, even our lowest sub, uh, our lowest um, subdivision retains the overall shape of the skull. It's just, I feel it's non-destructive to your art. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of see now that the forehead really isn't flat, right? It's got sort of this bulb in the center that can be sort of perceived as flat from a side view. Um, but that's only because it's breaking silhouette. It, it's really kind of this curved mass that's coming out of the head. Do you, uh, so I know you're working in like perspective. What's yeah. the, for you, like what's, what's sort of like the use cases for like perspective versus orthographic? You know, I still think. Like, do you use orthographic or does that just like sort of like trick the eye into saying things incorrectly? No, I, I use it. Um, I, I think if you were to watch this video and just look when I toggle it on and off, I, I, I do use it. I use it quite a bit, especially on side views, um, just to kind of gauge if things are lining up, especially, you know, I, I did that guy in the last video where he's in a symmetrical pose, but I sculpted it asymmetrically. I had to turn on orthographic view to try and get as close to a real side, flat side view as I could to gauge if the elbows were actually right across from each other in that view. So I do, I do use it to get certain, certain reads on things. Um, I will say though, it's better to work with it off 90% of the time, even when you think like with a front view that you should have it on because what their graphic view will, will, it distorts the face really, really horribly. And if you work with it, very early on for a very long time when you hit that perspective button you're gonna you end up with a rude awakening that all your proportions are messed up and it, and it kind of sucks yeah, um, i definitely felt that i've had that experience be, because the truth is is that your eyes never see anything in real orthographic view even if i got like a perfect centered view there'd still be some like sort of bowing you know, that happens and tilt because the eye is round and, and this whole thing. And so you might as well just work perspective and not worry about going like, well, this isn't going exactly straight in space because I did it in perspective. And when I turn on orthographic, it's got a slight tilt. Th that's probably OK, because that's that's more in line with what's naturally happening. Now, what's not OK is if, you know, something is is so messed up that it doesn't matter what's viewed in view it's in. But generally, orthographic view is not good to work in, I would say. It's good for checking angles and views. So it's more of a construction tool than it is like a like a view. For me, it is, yeah. Trying to get those cheeks in there. You know, sometimes you do have to mask stuff off to get the, the mesh to cooperate especially because I haven't separated any of this and I'm not going to punch a hole in there. So what I do here, and a lot of people don't know this, is you can sculpt on the inside of a mesh if you turn on back facing. So I, I need to pull out some polys, I think, in the nose and I, or in there in that cheek and in the nose as well. And I'm just going to sculpt on the inside to pull it in. Nice tip. Dude, Madeline Spencer. She's amazing. I learned that from her book. I've learned a lot of stuff about 3D from books, not tutorials and videos, actual books. Stuff that is not in tutorials, videos. Because <laughs> <laughs> her book is still sort of my Bible sometimes. Now here, I'm about to take out the transform tool and show you something. The cheek is at almost the same angle as the nose. Did you see that? I know that went a little fast. 
kind of show it again. The ridge of the nose and the... Yes. Yeah. Like the cheek is kind of turned at this diagonal angle and I'll move it over and the nose kind of hits that too. And you, and you see it on the ref. It's something I observed on the ref. Now, I do pull out the, the top of the nose a bit too far, but I fixed that later. I was more concerned about the angle. And I think, did I go orthographic there? I think I might have gone orthographic there. You're, you're still orthographic? Okay. Yeah, I think I stay there for a little while. So I do use it. Um, and you know, it's oak. It's better to turn orthographic view on later after all your proportions are sound. Cause then, you, cause I'm not gonna readjust any major forms with orthographic view. Like I'm not, cause that will just destroy things. Now here, what I'm doing is I recognize in drawing that there's a hard corner there and I see it in that model as well. And I'm, I took the clipping brush to just make sure that jaw hits that hard corner at that angle. Like I haven't even amended the rest of the jaw to meet that corner yet, but that corner is important for silhouette. And I just want to make sure that's there. Kind of getting in that nose there. I don't know what that's called, um, but that whole area of the nose that I'm sculpting up sort of comes off of the muzzle a little bit. You know, some people sort of sculpt it as one blending piece and it it's really not. It sort of comes up off of it. Now you got me curious. Oh, Wes is going to do it. That's awesome. He's going to look it up. Anterior nasal spine. There you go. Anterior nasal spine. Ladies and gentlemen, Wesley crushing it. <laughs> Bam. And then this this was this area I'm sculpting in the teeth to show that you can and that when you're doing these studies, you probably should. Um, you don't need to slow down and make sub tools. You know, if, if your goal is to come in and sculpt, try and sculpt everything as one piece as best as you can. That should be the exercise. That's the exercise to me. Now, if I wanted to take this to that next level um, and the teeth were frustrating me to sculpt, maybe I'd go and break down and make them separate teeth and do all this other stuff. But you know, you can get them pretty far if you just get used to sculpting the shapes and if you have good construction. You know, cause the anatomy is sort of the cherry on top of the box form, right? Like the teeth are just sitting on top of what was already there. Yeah, that makes sense. It can definitely be, it's another area where you can go down a, a rabbit hole and burn a bunch of time. It's like, I'm gonna go out here, I'm gonna sculpt each one of these teeth. It's like a fancy sub tool and do all this stuff. Are you getting paid to do that? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> and I just feel that doesn't help you become a, a stronger artist for when you do do those things, right? Like those things you could do probably in, in your sleep, you know, but, but are they making you better at sculpting really? Probably not. Now this is kind of what I'm talking about. I've kind of simplified the lower jaw um, I've removed an angle. I may do a follow-up video to this where I sort of break down the jaw by itself. In general though, these are the main planes of the jaw and um, like the lower teeth that you should be looking at. So what would the so what would the next? I'm curious. I'm kind of curious what the next sort of step. Like, what's the what's the next F, like exercise on this? Like, what 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 builds off of this next? Like, is it a head? Is it a better skull? Is it the is it going into like the body? Like, well, with this, I hope that it helps. Uh, it helps people just sort of understand how that they can they can sculpt the skull all from one piece that if they're mindful of the planes they can get something that looks like a skull pretty quickly and the the next thing would probably be to either i don't know, make it make a different video honestly wes with the the next piece of the puzzle you know what else does peter or Corey or somebody out there need help with um however it's funny you mentioned taking this further i have thought about taking you know, this skull or another skull 
and then going in and making sub tools of muscles or sculpting up the muscles on top on one side and mm -hmm. sort of demonstrating how it all sort of works together so i i mean i think i think you've suggested a uh, an idea for another video my friend nice it reminds me of those uh, if you've ever seen like the forensic anthropologists they'll take a take some skull or something that they've they've dug out of the ground and then using sort of science and some a certain amount of conjecture sort of like sculpt up all the like anatomy above it it's like here's the neanderthal face yeah you yeah. know yeah uh you know this is what like the queen of egypt looked like or whatever right yeah <laughs> totally. no i i love that stuff and, and you know i think it's important to sort of maybe go over that to show you know everybody talks about bony landmarks that you see but like not everybody can tell what is a bony landmark or why you only see that specific part of the bone so that yeah, totally. that might be a good video actually wes to just go in and just take one side and start sculpting up the muscles i think i might do that may not be the next one but it's probably in the pipe sure and then you know this is sort of it's not necessarily how things are, but it's a good trick to get the skull to read. It's good to give the whole upper teeth an overbite over the lower teeth. Um, it just makes it it just makes it feel like there's good overlap. It makes it feel like there's two separate pieces. Yeah, totally. I'm even pushing the molars in a little bit more than they actually would, because because really that they're they're sort of aligned. But what something about the sculpture it just gives you that sense of like okay, this is two separate pieces and one sits on top of the other. And that's probably because it, it that probably means it's subtly happening. You know, most things that you observe or most of these tricks mean that they're subtly happening. You know, that's what the old masters teach us. Right. And then I'm looking at the two skulls. And I'm just taking cues, really. I'm not trying to match one specifically over the other, especially because everybody's skull, the proportions are a little bit different. I'm finally going to fix the nose. It bothers me. It's funny. I'll watch these videos <laughs> and I'll see something that bothers me. <laughs> yep. That's certainly another another question is obviously there are sort of general rules of proportion but like how you know like how do you sort of learn where where there is that sort of variation and where there isn't you know is there are people with tall faces is there are people with round faces i mean a lot of that's sort of flesh but there is some variation you know the the big thing is usually is just observation like finding reference and um, you know, it's important to, to pay attention to the width of somebody's overall head. And the other thing, I lost it. There's a, the width and kind of shape of their head. You know, like you can usually tell if somebody has a round face or a square face or it kind of like peaks or narrows. But oh, also the keystone, you know, keystone spacing and, and height is very important. Um, it's really weird. You know, the keystone can... The, the keystone not being the right size or shape is generally going to make it so your likeness never reads. You know, there's a lot of information in that keystone, which is the, the center part where those bat wings kind of are, where it looks like <laughs> the bat signal. That That's what I'm talking about. There's a lot of personality built into that. Kind of rotating around the model, just kind of showing how it looks. Um, this has been about an hour of sculpting West total. Hmm. And then we kind of do non BPR best render, and then you know, there's our skull. Yep. Nice. And we got there pretty quickly. Um, it's not the best skull in the world. It's not the most finished skull in the world. But I feel that watching the video, if you look at the road that we took to get from the beginning to the end. Um, I feel it was very digestible because it, it's very planar. I, yeah, didn't, totally. I didn't take a very 
I guess, organic approach, approach to it. I don't know. You know what I'm talking about. Because yeah. some artists, and it's not a bad workflow, but you'll see these guys who, when you watch them work, it's, it's so almost loose and random. Right. Just their eye will catch an area and they'll refine it. And then their eye will catch another area and they'll refine it. And they're just kind of jumping around. Yeah. And, and, and you can't tell if they're stopping to think about construction or like where it is in space. But then all of a sudden you see everything start popping in space where it should. And you're like, okay, see, so you are thinking about it. You're just not constructing it in that way. You know, mine is a very 2D approach. It's a very um, life drawing approach. It's sort of gesture in where things are, find your planes, reinforce your planes. Once you get your planes and your forms in there, then you can start punching in anatomy. Like then you get to add the cherry on top. Yeah. I mean, I think especially for somebody who's sort of getting started or still in that sort of more junior level, you know, having that structure to build upon, like that always gives you like a bedrock. Like if you can lay that down, then like you're never lost. 100% man, 100%. When you go, when you're super pro and you've sculpted 10,000 of these damn skulls, you know, <laughs> it's easier because you've already done that work before. You're just, you're playing it back in your head. Exactly. And you know what? You, you actually hit on a super excellent point. One, personally for me, I do a few skull drawings a week, like literally. I feel that one of my weak points is my understanding of the skull. So I spend time drawing it. And at this point, I've sort of memorized where everything is, which makes sculpting it so much easier. You know, it's why I'm not trying to measure those skulls that I have as reference in the scene. I'm very comfortable with where things are, where they turn in space, because I'm not just practicing, oh, front view of the skull, side view of the skull. I'm going on Google, getting weird angles, and just trying to hit all that stuff. I'm doing many of them. You have to do a lot of this stuff. You know, nobody's awesome overnight. You you probably, if yeah, you want to make an awesome skull in an hour, you probably have to sculpt a hundred skulls or more. Yeah, that skull didn't take an hour. It took a hundred and one hours. Right. <laughs> Man, it took way more than that, Wes. Let me tell you. It took way more than that. What? I mean, it's a good thing for people to realize, right? Like when they do see someone who's pro busting stuff out, they didn't draw that in 15 minutes. All of that prep time, all that learning, like that's also factored into how long it took them to draw that shit. Exactly. And that thing they just drew for you is another practice thing in their tool belt. It's like yep. another one down. Yep. You're only making them stronger. And that's why I love doing these. You know, it's not... I like helping people and I like talking to you and Peter and Corey and everybody. I I also get the benefit of getting better by doing these. It's it's a win-win for everybody. <laughs> but you got to do the work. And I, and I hope that it, this channel sort of becomes just about doing the work. Maybe we end up over time with 40 skull videos. Maybe I sculpt the skull 40 times, but maybe that's just 40 individual times where we need to stop and make a skull to get better, you know? Totally. Or, or like yearly skull challenge, you know, like where are you a year later? We did a skull this year, we did two skulls. All right, skull anniversary. Have we learned anything? Did we get better? Did we get, we, skull we get worse? Anniversary. That's a good idea. Yeah, man. It's a real like, good idea. Yeah, it, it's like self-portrait day, but creepy. <laughs> well, it should be self-portrait of your skull. Oh, that'd be pretty good if you kind of figure out how your skull looks underneath your own face. <laughs> That's pretty good. Well, thanks for joining me, Wes. Do you have uh, yeah, do you have totally. any questions about anything you saw here today before I move on? I mean, your questions are tend to be other people's questions, so. Uh, no, I think a lot of it's just sort of like, they're sort of like learning the anatomy Proving your 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 sculpting skills, stuff like that. I mean, all of my questions would then be like, how this is applied to something else. Sure. You know, if you're, if you're making a stylized character, oh. how are what do landmarks mean in that context? 
sure you know stuff like that but those are things those are things to be answered in another like video it's like my question it will require many hours to answer right like, <laughs> yeah but those are those are all good video you, that's what i need you know i don't i don't want to just mindlessly sculpt things i'd rather sculpt things that people have a general interest in and you know if somebody wants to go how do i take this real thing and make it a stylized thing i think i think that's also a good video especially because i could this skull is done i could literally make half of it more stylized right sure. or or start sculpting a stylized character that where you kind of see a lot of maybe skull shapes and emphasize like where you can push or pull those, those are good ideas man those, those are good ideas and uh i think other people would enjoy that stuff well thanks wes thanks for joining us actually before we go do, do you have i don't know do you have any advice on getting better out there that you'd like to share with people Long on the spot always keep i don't know for me with it with everything like a lot like the way i get better is by like it's both like doing it but it's also like for me it's absorbing knowledge from other people like i do get a lot out of watching other people's processes sure because then i can you know i'll pick and choose out of what i see them doing the things i think will help help my process you can try them out you know um so that's that's a, a lot of it's just keep keep going and don't get like don't get comfortable oh totally Especially, yeah like if you get to a place where like hey, i can make a pretty good skull or you know or you know for a vfx you know it's like oh, i can make this thing it looks pretty good and you know like the the bar is always moving like what was awesome five years ago is not awesome anymore and so if you're not like moving with that bar you're, you're just gonna get left behind like you can never can't just ever set sit comfortably like especially if you're like looking to work in like industry like if you want to work in films or games or something like that like th there is no oh, i'm comfortable now I, I figured it out because it's all gonna change the expectations are going to move forward you gotta move with them you get left behind you're you're 100 right man i mean i and I think about that stuff all the time, especially doing characters. I, I feel that ZBrush has been here too long. I go, you know, ZBrush is 10 years old now. And it's not it's not ZBrush. I, I'm it's talking about a program that. that comes along and fundamentally changes the way I sculpt. Yeah, the way you know, substance did with like surfaces. Correct. Correct. That completely just changed it. Like, cool. We don't do it like we did before. You're painting your textures in like Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Come on, what you're doing, you might be doing it wrong. Yeah, it Photoshop is is done in that regard. Exactly. Like, you know, it's, Photoshop's a touch-up tool now. Right? Like, <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's totally true. Awesome. Days, like going in there and let me paint my spec. Glad to be here. Yeah, I think it'd be good to have you back too. I think this is super informative. I think you ask good questions, and I think you ask questions that the the, the audience or whoever is watching would want to know. I think you also make good suggestions. So I feel like you're a little treasure trove, I guess. Wesley crushing it over here. Yeah, happy to happy to be here. Awesome. Anytime. Yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Have a good one. <laughs>